Now, resuming with our work, um, I want to do two more maps, um, or maybe more maps than two, but let's start with two. And there's a couple of things I want to show. Um, let's say I want to map the average number of rooms in a census tract, um, and then um, I want to map the number of owned dwellings, right? So let's do that. Remember the, the fact that the given the higher prices or higher land values, um, the housing units in, in the center of the town or closer to the center of the town should be smaller because um, we would be trying to economize on land and then in the suburbs where land is cheap, we should expect bigger, bigger um, homes. So let's um, plot a map of the average number of rooms, which is a variable right here. So I say map, a uh, quantile map, or maybe um, uh, a natural breaks map, five breaks, and I pick this variable called average number of rooms and or actually let's do average number of bedrooms because rooms would include everything so every number of bedrooms we click okay and we get the map and well guess what um the largest uh, um, homes are in the suburbs uh, with 3.3 or more average number of bedrooms and if i were to zoom into downtown or central part of the toronto or the city of toronto i, I can see that the places where we saw very high density we also see um, small homes of roughly uh, one to two bedrooms, right? So this is it. We may get a different uh, view of this if we were to change the map type to standard deviation. Um, and then uh, I can zoom out a bit. Um, uh, so fix to window mode. And then you could see that, you know, the darkest blues are very small uh, units of less than 1.29 bedrooms. They're at downtown. And as you move fr from down, down, out, outwards in, in, in the York region, or this is the Peel region, you see higher homes or larger homes are here, and larger homes are here. Fine, good. Now, I don't need to transform this variable. It is average number of bedrooms, and it is okay the way it is. I don't need to divide it with another variable. But would I be able to do the same with, say, the number of uh, owned or rented dwellings? So let's say I, I extend this uh, second hypothesis that um, renters are more pronounced or should be more pronounced in downtown, which is the area around here. Um, so if I were to do that, um, let's make a map of renters. So I'll go back and create a new map. So the, the variable is dwellings rented. I go back, click map, uh, create natural breaks, or standard deviation map. And um, I would say dwelling rented, which should be somewhere here. And click OK. And lovely, we have another map. Um, I make it slightly bigger. And you could see that, um, yes, in the suburbs, we don't see much of those. But we do see this area here in Peel region where a large number of rental units are there and so on and so forth. But then again, um, if you were to zoom in, you will notice that the rental maps, the number of uh, rental units um, that are high in these neighborhoods, they're very small neighborhoods compared to those neighborhoods here in the suburbs. So a better way of looking at it is what percentage of the housing units are rental units rather than looking at the number of rental units in the zone because the number of rental units change by the size of the zone. But if we were to convert it into percentage of units, um, percentage of rental units, then we would um, avoid this, this issue of the, uh, the, the underlying size of the census tract. So I go back and then I say, fine, okay, I, I may need this map again, so I'll just not remove it. I go back here, table, and I say, create a new variable. This time again, it will be a bivariate, um, and I'll call it uh, um, percent rental, right? And somehow it's not acceptable, it turned red. Uh, so I say percent R-E-N-T, so that should be, give me a clue that it's percent rental real variable add and here I say um, dwelling rented divided by the total occupied dwellings in the census tract and just to keep things interesting multiply it by 100 and it should calculate this variable apply close and this variable should exist there there you go percentage rental and I say map and this time again I say um, natural breaks 5 and I pick this new variable that I created, percent rental, and it's just plotted right away, and I make it slightly bigger. And I forgot the 
what type of map I created here, which was a standard deviation map. So let me go back to the, the newly created map. It says natural breaks. I just change this to standard deviation to keep things similar. And I will zoom in on it as well, just to make sure that we look at the same city of Toronto and fairly reasonable. Now see if I can bring these two maps Okay, so first we look at the percentage rental and you see that higher percentage rental are here and this in downtown Toronto. And if you were just looking at the rental units in the past, um, you had these neighborhoods in Mississauga or somewhere in, uh, outside, no, not in Mississauga, in, in Etobicoke. And here in Etobicoke and in, in the suburbs, you see other unit, other areas where there are high number, higher number of rental units. But if you look at the percentage of rental units, you see that the distribution is not identical, it's slightly different. And I'm, you know, given this short canvas space here, and let me see if I can fit these two canvases somehow, overlap them slightly. And here, I'm hoping this is fitting this frame, but I'm just guessing it. Um, so if I'm looking at it here side by side, I see that um, these these neighborhoods, which were higher rental units, because we were just looking at the actual number, they are no longer the highest um, in concentration of rental units when we look at the percentage. So you get a very different picture when you normalize a variable and get rid of the inherent problems with the size of the variable, size of the census tract. You may also notice that the um, when in the standard deviation map, um, when you plot the data and by standard deviation you get negative values, and um, I would say just you know pick a type of the map that is not necessarily taking you into um, you don't you don't have to struggle by explaining what is a negative population density because there is no such thing, um, but um, I would just pick natural breaks or maybe not natural breaks um, quantile and just say go with five quantiles and then. This solves the problem. You've got five distributions. I mean, the color scheme, I guess, is better in standard deviation map, and I wish they can change the color scheme. Okay, so we are looking at this map. We don't like the color scheme, and I can click here. See, right, this this legend here. Click here. I get a category editor, and I create this new category called custom breaks. And instead of um, uh, sequential, which is this color scheme, I would pick say diverging. I like diverging. Okay, so let's keep that. And this is now done. We clo close it, and then I right click here and say change current theme to custom breaks. And now we get this custom break. So we we get that look that I wanted. And you know the lowest densities of lowest number of those rental units neighborhoods are in out in the suburbs. The last thing I would like to show is um, this software is equally capable of doing regression analysis for which um, I can click on methods and say regression. And um, within regression, I get a new dialog box. Let's say, what is the impact of rental units on percentage of people taking public transit, right? So percentage of people in a census tract that take public transit, that's our dependent variable. So I clicked it there. And I want to know if how is this influenced by a percentage of rentals in the the neighborhood, and then um, let's say the average number of bedrooms. Um, um, so we take that, and uh, we click on um, other variables. For example, and I'm going down the list, um, average household income. So I click that, and then further down the list, it would I would have. Um, uh, population density in which is uh, here and so four variables right so classic linear regression model uh, nothing special and then I say run and as soon as I say run there is a output available so I could see that the adjusted R square is 57 percent not bad um, the percentage rental uh, the higher the rental percentage if, if the percent of rental households goes up by one um, in a neighborhood, the number of uh, people, um, percentage of people taking public transit goes up by 31%, which is fairly large impact. As the average number of bedrooms increases uh, in a neighborhood, it has a negative impact. It declines the transit ridership by 2% for a unit increase in the average number of bedrooms. As income rises, uh, you can get, um, you see a higher um, transit ridership in high income areas. But again, if you look at the T stat, 
right here, it's less than 1.96, so it's not statistically significant. So I would say that income doesn't have a statistically significant impact on transit ridership. And the density, you know, the higher the density, the higher the, ra the, the uh, ridership. And it has some impact, but then some of it is controlled for uh, by the other variables. So this concludes everything um, for this tutorial. Okay, folks, so the last thing to do is to save our project. So I go File, and then it says Save. And then it says changes made to the data source save. So clear, however, this is no project file associated with this project. Create a project file now, recommended. Okay, so if they are recommending it, and I will call this um, temp or maybe today is November 13th. So let's call it November NOV 13. I need to type on it NOV 13 2015 um, Jira. Or we don't need to say that. And then that's about it. I would like to add another underscore here and that's the file save saved successfully got an audio confirmation for that file exit okay to exit yes and that's the end of it